Hello. In this video, we'll be talking about how to use the VNC uh, server, which is installed on all of our display products as a service in the default. It's not active on the displays, though, so you need to turn it on, and then you can use the VNC to essentially remotely view and control the machine from any VNC client. Uh, so VNC stands for Virtually Networked Computing, and it essentially allows you to control a remote computer. So in this case, that computer is going to be the display. And for this video, we're going to control it from our desktop here. But you can control it from phones or, or any other, anything that can run a VNC client. Um... So, uh, first off, I'm going to connect to my display via PuTTY. So we've done this in a lot of all of our other videos. Um, so again, you know, I'm using PuTTY in this video, but you can use the virtual machine and the Linux terminal to connect to the display. So anything that can connect to it via SSH. So the IP address of my display is um, 0 0.4 and... I'll note that right now I'm directly connected to my display. So my display is directly connected to my computer and I'm running a DHCP server. Um, we've talked about how to connect to the displays though. And the, the VNC server or client specifically, you don't need to be directly connected to the display. That's kind of the idea behind it is the display could be... Um, you know, anywhere on your network, as long as you can connect to it. So theoretically, it could be across the world from you. And if you had access to the network that it was connected to, um, usually through like a VPN or something, then you could connect to that network through a VPN and uh, access the display, you know, via the uh, via PuTTY or any SSH terminal, and then once you have access to the display, you can access it from the VNC client. So we'll talk in a future video about how you could potentially use our telematics AI module, which provides the display Wi-Fi capability to either connect to it uh, by allowing the display to make its own Wi-Fi network, and having your phone connect to that Wi-Fi network and using a VNC player or client on your phone, or potentially having the display connect to a larger Wi-Fi network um, that you're also connected to. So there are multiple ways to do this. The important thing is that you just have a connection to the display in some way. Um, okay, so we're right now in PuTTY and we are going to move to the opt etc init.d folder. And as we've talked about before, this folder contains startup scripts for the display. So they're essentially user startup scripts that are going to be executed when the display starts. Um, I won't get into you know how they're executed and stuff. I, I've talked about that in another video. Um, but We've talked about this startup GUI script a few times, and this script allows us to start our own application. So it's actually what's starting the Qt application. So by default, the startup GUI is starting this settings application on the display. Um, but we are going to change that to be our own application. And we're also going to change this file to allow or run the VNC server. So I'm going to use a program called Nano. We've used this before um, to edit this startup GUI file. So I'm going to say Nano. Um, okay, so here is kind of our default settings. Um, you know, I'm going to exit out of this and I'll just show you guys. So uh, coming to my opt folder, I'm going to just show you what I'm doing here. The I have an application that I've built and compiled for the display from my virtual machine. 
it's a QT4 application. So this is kind of important. Um, in this video, we'll only be talking about getting a QT4 application um, using the QWS windowing system to work uh, with the VNC player. Right now, QT5 will not work with this, the instructions I'm giving here. Um, so I'm gonna, you know, so here's the, the folder. So, you know, we've talked about in other videos as well, how to deploy and build, build and deploy a QT application to the display. Uh, so it deploys into this folder here and we can see the application there. So I'm gonna point this startup GUI file to this application. So I want it to start that now. Um, so I'm gonna nano startup GUI, but now since I'm not in that folder, I need to tell it where. So it's in opt etc and it dot d startup GUI. Okay, uh, so here's where I tell it where that application is that I want it to start. So that's in the opt folder and it's called Faria 800 by 480. And this is the path to the application. So if you remember, the opt is a folder and then the Faria 800 by 480 is a folder. And the application name is again, Faria 800 by 480. Oops. So this is just the um, kind of the default naming that we make in QT for deploying the application. You know, it, it'll always deploy to a folder with your application name and then an application inside that folder will be named the same. So it, it should be a similar structure for you guys. Uh, okay, so after we change this, the important part to use the VNC is right here, and it's just a simple change to this file. So it says to enable VNC, change the following value from zero to one. Um, it also talks about there's a performance penalty when using VNC, and that's because you're now, um, I mean, not only is the processor working harder to run the server and all that, um, but you're sending the graphics to a VNC client and that VNC client can control your machine so, or your display. So essentially it's, um, I don't notice, you know, the performance hit a lot, but it is there. Um, so your application may not run quite as smoothly as when you're not using the VNC. Uh, okay, so to use VNC, we just change this to one. And that's really it. Um, you can see down here where that line of code in the script is that checks. So the use VNC here is zero and um, essentially it's going to change how the application starts depending on what it is. So if it's, if it if we're using the VNC, it's going to start it with this multi-transformed VNC line. And if we're not, it, it doesn't use that line. Um, okay, so that's it. So I hit Control X and it's gonna ask if I want to save the changes. I do, so I'm gonna hit Y for yes and uh, keep it at the same file. So it asked me the file name to write um, and I'm gonna keep it the same, so just hit Enter. And that does it. So all the settings should be in place. I'm gonna reboot the, the screen. So you need to reboot. So as I said, um, these are executed at startup. So this, the changes won't take effect until the, the screen restarts again. But right now my screen is rebooting and um, Wait a second for the application to pop up. Meantime, I will close Putty. All right, so my screen is rebooted and I can see the application. Um, so obviously you guys can't see it running on my display, but uh, we can see from Putty that I can log in again. So now uh, let's check out one thing here. So now when I look at Putty, 
if I type PS to bring up the list of running processes. You can see my application here is started and it started with this VNC line that tells it the size, the depth, etc. Um, so that's good. So that means that our VNC change took effect. Um, so now we are going to come down here and I am going to use an application that I've installed called tight VNC. Um, I'm going to come to the viewer here. So just to note, there are a lot of VNC players on the market. Um, you can, I'll come here and just say like, you know, in a Google search, uh, VNC player and you'll see there's real VNC. Um, you know, here's the one I have tight VNC. Uh, but again, there's, there's a lot, all of them should work. So it should be independent of the one that you download. Uh, I like tight VNC. I mean, it, it works well for me. It's free and they have players for windows, um, Mac, iOS and Android, so you can sort of use the same company across all the different lines and, and expect sort of the same features and things. Uh, but you guys are free to use whatever you want. Um, so the connection is really simple. So we're just here. I already had the IP address in, but here we just type the IP address of our display and click connect. And there we go. So on my computer screen now, I can see what's on my display. So this is the Faria 800 by 480 application that I started um, with the startup GUI. And we can see it's actually moving. So I'm seeing the exact same thing on my display. Um, so as I click down here, I'm actually interacting with my display. So I can see this happening on my display. Um, and I can also do it the other way so I can interact with my display and you'll notice now buttons are turning on and that's because I'm hitting them on my display and it's being reflected from my computer and vice versa. So this essentially allows you remote connection uh, to the display and it will mirror whatever's on the display and you can access it and control it from your computer or phone or whatever it can connect. Um, okay, I, I think that covers it. Obviously, if you want to turn the VNC back off, you would kind of follow these steps in reverse. So um, in PuTTY, you would just go back into the startup GUI file and turn VNC from one back to zero as it is by default. Um, you know, you can obviously start up a, a different application and all of that and we'll go over in future videos maybe how to use a VNC player on your phone and the telematics module to truly connect to a display remotely so right now I'm sort of hooked up to the display through my computer um, but as I said it doesn't it, you know your display could be connected to your Wi-Fi network for instance or your router and that would give you broader uh, access to it or it could be on a completely separate network that you could VPN into and see the mirror of your display. So there's a lot of cool options with this um, but hopefully this gave you an idea of what it can do and what a VNC is and um, yeah play around with it. Thanks for watching.